My name is Noah Arliss, a development manager with Oracle Coherence, and today I'll be talking about the Coherence Incubator. I'll be covering what the Coherence Incubator is, reasons why you might want to use the Incubator, and then I'll provide an overview of the patterns that we ship. The Coherence Incubator is a hosted repository of projects that provide example implementations for commonly used design patterns and integration solutions built using Coherence. The repository of examples was built based on a common set of experiences building complex real-world applications on top of coherence. The functionality came from working in concert with and listening to the needs of our customers. Out of these experiences, we've developed specific patterns, each solving unique real-world use cases using recommended best practices. The incubator is available to you as pre-compiled jars, as well as full source distributions, which can be used to peruse the code, as well as to modify to meet the needs of your application. What are some of the reasons that you might want to use the incubator? First and foremost, it's a way to learn not only new techniques, but also best practices for building applications on top of coherence. You may, for example, want to learn how to use a backing map listener. We use those all the time. In addition, uh, the incubator provides uh, asynchronous patterns on top of coherence, so you can embrace the asynchronous behavior of these patterns to improve the performance of your client applications on top of coherence. And finally, we provide some key solutions uh, in some of our patterns that your applications may find useful as self-contained value-add components on top of coherence. Some key ones are the messaging pattern, which provides high-performance cues and topics, the processing pattern, which provides you with a compute grid API, leveraging the computing resources not only inside of the coherence cluster, but also externally. And finally, you may want to synchronize your data across the WAN using push replication. The incubator projects form a stack of functionality that can be used together or independently as needed. At the bottom of the stack are the dependencies required by the incubator, Java and coherence. And then above that are each of the different projects and patterns, starting with Coherence Common, which is a common set of utilities, through the processing pattern, the command pattern, messaging pattern, and push replication. And what you can see from this image is that push replication is dependent on the messaging pattern, for example. The Coherence Common project provides a collection of utility packages and classes that are commonly used to support the implementation of other incubator projects, or the component is too small to be considered a self-contained project. Highlights include the extensible environment, which is an enhanced default cache server implementation that allows developers to independently create custom configurations and runtime extensions for coherence. There's an eventing framework, which enables developers to, to write server-side asynchronous event-based applications embedded within coherence. There's a coherence log handler that will take Java-based, Java util-based log messages and write them to the coherence logging. We have sequence generators, which is a set of interfaces and classes that simplify the creation of sequence numbers either locally or across the cluster. We have an Amazon EC2 address provider, which is an address provider implementation that will simplify deploying coherence in EC2. EC2 does not support multicast, and the address provider that we have in common provides you with a simple way of, of managing deployments in EC2. We also have a collection of processors, which are useful entry processors that include things like an invoke method processor for remotely invoking methods through reflection. We also have the Object Proxy Factory, which is a class that enables the creation of local proxies of objects stored in a cache. What this means is that you can take an object locally in your application even and interact with it even though the, the actual object is residing inside of the coherence cluster. Finally, we have a set of common, commonly used useful backing map listeners that are a foundation for many of the incubator patterns but also may be useful in and of themselves as you're building your applications. The command pattern provides a simple, asynchronous alternative to entry processors. It's a distributed implementation of the classic command pattern. In it, a command represents an action that will be executed at some point in the future. This command encapsulates all necessary information to perform the action and provides, a, provides the mechanism to perform said action. In the coherence implementation, commands are executed in the scope of a context. Within that context, commands are executed in the order in which they arrive in the cluster.
This slide outlines the flow of how commands are executed in the command pattern. When a client submits a command, it's first routed through the context cache where it's given a unique order in which to execute. From there, it's routed to the commands cache for execution. As you can see in the diagram, the command is also backed up by coherence. The functor pattern is an extension to the command pattern that allows for the returning of a result in the form of a future. Functors are also executed asynchronously in the grid like the command pattern, and except that in this case, results are returned in the form of a Java util concurrent future. The messaging pattern provides a coherence-based, hubless messaging solution that is highly available, scalable, and resilient. Because the pattern is based on coherence, it can be scaled out as any other application could. In addition, the messaging pattern shares the same infrastructure as your application, allowing for a simplified way to pass messages from one side to another, all within the context of your JVM, taking, leveraging coherence's ability to pass information across the network. The messaging pattern provides support for both queues and topics. The push replication pattern provides an extensible, flexible framework for replicating and synchronizing data from one cluster to another. As the name suggests, data is pushed from the site where it's updated out to whatever other sites are configured. There's a plethora of deployment topologies available for push replication, starting with the simplest active-passive, where there's one site actively publishing to another. Common use cases for active-passive include disaster recovery, keeping a, hot, a cluster hot and warm, ready to go, in the case there's a need to bring a data center down. In addition to active-passive, we also support active-active, where both sites are actively publishing to one another. In scenarios where we're act in active active scenarios where data may be updated on both sides, you have to take into account the notion of conflict resolution, something else provided by the push replication pattern. With the hub and spoke topology, there's one active site replicating out to many passive clusters. In the multi-master deployment, we have all clusters speaking to all other clusters. This is probably the most complex type of deployment model available. And finally, we have the centralized replication topology, where each leaf node, each leaf cluster, I should say, is, has an active-active relationship with the hub. And the hub is responsible for replicating the data out from not only from the hub, but from any other updates from a leaf. So if, the, if an update comes in from leaf 1, then leaf 2, 3, and 4 will receive that update through the hub. The processing pattern provides a simple and extensible framework for the processing of work across the coherence cluster. Work can be submitted without needing to know how coherence works or how to build a custom configuration. Unlike traditional hub and spoke, master worker, or broker agent patterns, the processing pattern implementation avoids the single point of failure because it uses coherence. This picture shows the many options available to you when using the processing pattern. Not only can you execute code inside of a coherence cluster, but you can also execute code running on an extend client. In essence, with the processing pattern, work is submitted asynchronously to the grid, and a, and a result is returned immediately to the, cluster, to the client in the form of a submission outcome. The submission outcome can be thought of as a future to which an event handler could be registered to fire when the result is returned or to which the client can actively wait for a result. Once work has been submitted to the grid, it's routed to an appropriate task processor for execution and when completed the result is returned and the submission outcome is notified. Finally, we have an examples project, the Coherence Incubator Examples demonstrate how to use most of the projects in a variety of different ways. The examples ship with not only the source code on how to use the incubator projects, but also ANS scripts and directions on how to run them. The goal of the examples project is to provide end users with a quick and easy way to get the incubator patterns up and running.